Hey what's up guys, this is Alex and today we're gonna see the process of me composing this track from scratch. It I'm gonna play it first, it sounds something like this.
this track is my most ambitious original to date and as you heard it's quite complicated i recorded the whole process of me composing this from scratch to 25 hours and you're gonna see me composing the first half now and you can check out the rest of the track uh, with the other episodes available on patreon you can also download the stamps of this track on patreon and you can listen to the full track on its own in my Alex Kala music channel so without further ado let's get into the process of me composing this track from scratch which is, I think, my favorite. I hope you can enjoy it and learn something useful from it. Hey, what's up, everyone? Let's compose something cool. Let's see what I come up with today. So, uh... Actually, this is a project file that I created to try and compose something for the Junkie XL, like, um, applications, but... Uh, kind of... I don't know. I'm not feeling very inspired. So I'm just going to compose something random. There might not be lots of like chatting about in this episode because I want to be concentrated. However, if you want to see a composer composing stuff and be entertained by the composer at the same moment, you should check out Daniel James. He's the guy who can do that. I can't. I can just do one thing at a time, sadly. <laughs> so.
<clears throat> Let's see. So obviously this is gonna be, I don't know if it's clear, but I thought of making this like a dark team or something. Surely might be ripping off so many composers now <laughs> already. Because this sounds very familiar in my head. Well. I'm not sure how to continue the brass line, but for now, uh, it starts here. Uh, uh, kind of thing. No, no, I, I could probably continue it. It doesn't need to change all the time. Maybe. I don't know. No, it wouldn't sound good. Well, anyway, let's check it out. Oh, I could not hear the brass. Oh, well, maybe it's because it's playing legators or something. No. Just tremendously quiet. Let's do this then. This and we do that. Oh, the difference is pretty huge. Maybe I should use a... Uh... No. Yeah, if I do something like this, it might sound much better. Dude, what? Why are those marcatos so freaking short? I suppose I'm gonna use this as an enforcement and layer like some other horns with that.
Hmm. I'm trying to use the French horn three patch because I don't want to use too many French horns and stuff. At least it was. It's gonna sound a bit like unrealistic, but I'm feeling forced right now to actually use the French horn nine. So we would end up having like twenty seven French horns, or rather, yeah, twenty seven. Oh, uh, not the right position. Of course, yeah, now I gave in to the dark side. Maybe here we just need... Probably too dark for now. I like the like the weird interval there. Not sure about that. But anyway, so and then uh uh, so what I'm thinking right now of uh, uh, is a character from a game called Magic the Gathering. This character is called Vraska, and I'm trying to outline her story uh, in music, which is a quite tragic and dark story. Thus, the Dark Horse. So I'm going to try to use the same shape I used. So... Um, Doesn't work. Uh, terrible. Don't know what key to use here. Like this. In this case is why you should probably start the music theory. Because if you do not music theory, you don't get stuck at these things. You know exactly how to summon the exact chord you want to summon, which I don't. I mean, if you study it, but you also need like, like you need to study it for a long time before you really become a master, but you know. So.
That can be an interesting movement, but not for now. Nope. Trying to come up with something dark that still makes sense. That's very tough. So maybe if I can also hear the strings, it's gonna help me. So So I ended up doing like a minor C, really. <laughs> I'm just gonna do the same and then maybe change things later. I always have this thing where I'm, you know, I try to not be boring, but I try to change too many things straight away, which is not a good idea.
So at this point, I can either develop upon this chord progression I'm writing, keep it the same, but add new layers to it, or I can play with the harmony a bit, which is what I actually would love to do. Because Vraska is a bit of an enigm enigmatic character, you know. Uh, obviously, she's a Gorgon. So, you know, she's the kind of girl that you look at in her eyes and you end up getting fried and stuff. Very dark. However, there are some sides to, that, to her which are not. Like, they're a bit unexpected. Uh, so if I could write a chord progression that is not, like, super clear, like, with what you're hearing, it would be amazing. However, I don't really know. I could, I could probably, you know, one thing I could do is change the chord progression to something interesting, or I could keep it the same, but then use this shape, like, nah, 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 and then play around with this a lot throughout the composition and take it to different places to show Vraska's different character traits. Or, uh, I don't know. Uh, I should do the thing that comes to me as the most instinctive, but I know if I do the most instinctive thing, I'm just going to complicate myself. And, uh, whatever. Wow, this sounds filthy. Okay. So what am I trying to do here?
we'll have to change this one a lot. Bit of a weak transition if I do it that way. Uh, maybe I should keep on doing that, the, this pattern, but how? So the story of Raska uh, has many sides to it. The first side is that, you know, in the beginning, this is an important character for the Magic the Gathering like storyline and stuff. Uh, and the cool thing about the game is it's, it's a card game. However, many of the characters you see in the card game has, have very like intricate stories, which could, you know, each character could have like a, an entire TV series made about him or something. And uh, for Vraska, she, uh, wait, maybe I should have got some woodwinds here. She is this Gorgon, uh, and basically to cut the story short, because it's very detailed, she gets imprisoned, uh, because all of her kin suddenly, uh, you know, wait, where is my, uh, okay, original patches. Okay, contrabassoons. So she is a Gorgon in a world where like there's many different races and stuff. So, you know, it's not a big deal. And one day her race becomes illegal. Like literally just because of, the, just because of the fact, the, because of the fact that she is part of a certain clan, she gets imprisoned. So I'm trying to start this track with a bit of darkness to like, uh, showcase her, her kind of a dark side but then the next part i want to write is like the act where she gets in prison like by the guards and, and stuff uh which must have been traumatic so it's <laughs> gonna try to do to like to make a dark sort of like part and stuff like that and in the prison that's where she will actually meet her uh destiny and stuff like that and become an important character for the story of magic gathering uh yeah so, okay, I'm not sure if these contrabassoons will make any sense, but just thought that maybe we could help, like we could have them double the low brass parts. I don't even know if I have the Metropolis Arc 1 patch for this. No, obviously not. Let's hope it's the right one. Yeah, it's kind of the same.
Maybe they are too high. Nice. They might not sound good on their own, actually. However, when you layer them with the rest, like the brass and stuff. They might contribute to giving that low end. Then I might add even some like tubas and stuff to do the same. Uh, so you guys copy and paste here. Wow, that's very deep. That's probably better. Now we're talking. However, it's still not enough. What I want to do also add maybe some double bass or something. So this might be an example of an orchestration where I'm not, I'm not really trying to do complex stuff, but I just beefing it up like crazy. Uh, so you, there's no crescendos here. So and I have to use sustain all the time. Okay, this is going to be interesting. But yeah, she, I'm, I'm going to tell you the story of Rask as, as we go on. But yeah, basically it's in this, like it's, to give you the, some context, uh, her, her story is set in this city called Ravnica, where there's many different guilds. And each guild, um, you know, in Magic the Gathering, there's pretty much Different elements. Okay. So each creature or person responds to or corresponds to a specific element. There is, and Vraska's element pretty much is like green and black. It's like the, the magic element, the mana. And green is, is representing of all, of all things like nature and stuff like that. So like many of the beasts in magic have green color now as, as their element and stuff like that. But her, her color is both green but also black, which black is like death and stuff like that. So nature plus death usually is like decay, uh, all the things that are not very nice, like, you know, uh, like gorgons or, or zombies and stuff, uh, you know, in magic at least. So... And there, there's many different guilds in Ravnica. So there's black and green, which is like, again, decay. But then there's also white and red, which is like a legion of soldiers and angels and stuff. There is also blue and white, uh, you know, what else? Uh, black and white, green, green and red. And uh, each color or combination of elements has a different guild assigned to it. And the green and, and black guild is called the Golgari guild. And it's the one with all the zombies and strange creatures and gorgons and monsters and all the, you know, abhorrent creatures and stuff. However, in this guild, they all live like in, I'd say harmony, you know, pretty much. Or rather, I, I don't, I'm not really an expert in magic. So I cannot read, maybe some things I, I will say now are not correct. But basically until the moment where the Golgari guild became like, you know, like until the moment where Raska's race and stuff became illegal, uh, every, everyone was living kind of in peace and stuff. However, she's still, you know, green, black. So she has darkness in her character. So I'm trying to portray that in the intro to say, this is the dark character. This is Raska. But then she gets in prison and this part we're going to do, we're going to explore the side of things. 
what I'm doing now is just having like these sort of dark colors playing with it. And these are very basic and I suppose minor chords. Uh, and this sort of rising, I don't know, feels very cinematic and kind of mysterious as well. So we, we, when you hear this, you're like, we're picking into either the mind of an interesting character or we're picking into, I don't know, a dungeon or something. Like there's this sense of mystery to it, which is what I wanted to summon. Now, I also want to do these notes, but maybe on like sustained brass. So I'm going to use century brass, which I'm not sure if it's going to sound great. Okay. What if I actually do... So the thing I actually wanted to do before, which didn't work well in Metropolis Arc 1, might work well in Century Brass. And that's the reason why you want to have, you know, ideally different libraries for different things. Okay, no. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. Need to find the right balance. This is something like this, man. Okay, I'm just gonna copy paste that one because I don't really want to spend time doing the MIDI control command stuff. Uh, not point to point do that if you're not convinced of the track itself yet. So I just do these sort of things at the end usually. Or rather, that's what I tell to myself. I, when I'm, at, I'm finished with the track, I'm like, okay. I didn't do the MIDI control commands perfectly, but the track sounds decent, so whatever. I'm gonna publish it the same way, so it's like... Here I want to change a chord actually. It's G. I'm gonna set it to G sharp. Oh wow! Oh my god, now I want to change everything. So now... What if I do this? I'm not sure, uh, but... I do like... Maybe I should go back and do the G4 normally uh, because there's too much change going on then if I don't. Okay, now of course I also want to add some strings. Now, the best, the best, or not the best, but actually the one of the ways in which you can simulate a sense or create a sense of like mystery is using tremolos. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why, guys. They just do it. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm taking so much time into like writing this chord progression or whatever 
But that's the reason because like the reason is that I'm trying to like outline the, like to incept the character of this person in this in this specific bit. What if I actually do this with tremolo? It's not going to make sense, but... Well, whatever. I actually wanted to do tremolos, uh, maybe on second violins, just as a you know, background thing. Again, doesn't have anything to do with our you know, pattern here. So This is a cool way to enforce certain center notes in your harmony. So if I wanted the G to be way more pronounced, I would just do this. But I don't want the G more pronounced, I want the B. We don't have any Bs here. Oh yeah, we have them, okay. I can actually, you know, enforce all the notes that are playing in my pattern. Or I can do... Play around, you know. This is why I like to compose with ghost notes, which is a new bitch thing to do, I suppose. You know, it's such a, you know, it's a trick. You're, you're giving help by the DAW, but it helps me to visually remind myself of what is going on. So I can say, hey, I'm just going to double the notes in uh, whatever, you know, just I'm doing now. So I did the man's going roll. Wait, how is this possible? How is this linked already and stuff? Well, whatever. And the other thing I can do is just play around with it like this. If I go so high, it's going to be too noticeable. And here I can do something like... What if I do it? Uh, too many changes at the same time. Nah, nah, nah. Let's leave it as it is. Okay. What I wanted to do actually in this specific part is to add another voice. Now, I'm not sure if this violin 
Are they gatos or not? Uh, but I'm gonna add it on second variance. So, here. Let me remove the French one so I can concentrate. I would have probably added like a super high. Super high, but super timid. Too timid. Very weird colors I'm summoning right now, I think. I also want to add our second voice to this. I cannot follow our pattern down there. So I'm gonna actually copy paste the pattern. I don't want to copy, like I don't want to like follow the same notes, I just want to follow the same rhythm. Uh, so let's see. This is really fun. However, it's taking a long time. Like, it's not very productive. It's also because I've never written a track like this. Like a theme for a character. With these sort of colors. I suppose. I don't know. So there's legato activated on this second violin, so they cannot play that pattern there. Uh, I need to disable it. I also need to save this project because I did some progress I don't want to lose. So save. Hmm. I don't need to lose myself in detail before I run out of my ideas. However, uh,
almost inaudible. Yeah, I think I'm going to move this to maybe like some violas and stuff. Uh, we should going to do the same exact sort of movements we have here. Maybe, I don't know. Actually, if I did this. Yep. I don't know if I like it. No, I don't like it. Like, I like the idea behind the harmony, but this is not the right way to execute it. Oh, there's also tremolo. I'm not gonna do this on any string instrument. I might do a similar thing, but on a plucked instrument, whatever, I don't know. Let's go back to our second venues though, because I... Mm. Meh. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it could probably work since it's in the background. It's in the background, so people don't really they will not listen. They will not hear it that much. Now, what I wanted to do, of course, was add some other stuff. Uh, this would be a good place to introduce a certain motif, probably. Uh, maybe with a solo instrument and stuff like that. And of course, I was thinking of Merate. Because, uh, I don't know, I love, I love the sound of like, this vocal patch. And I was also thinking of adding like, a glockenspiel. Or, no, no, Glockenspiel, Celeste, actually. It would be cool if I could I, use an instrument that, like, I dedicated to this character only or something, but I don't know. I don't know if I have that. Uh, or use the Celeste. Oh, God, there's so many other... Okay. Uh, 
Not that wrong. Come on. Okay. Now. Mm. What? Okay. So the Chalesta, I've probably, you know, the thing that I use it all the time, and the thing that prompted me to use it was a soundtrack from a game. And someone commented that on one of my covers the other day because I use Chalesta quite a bit. And he's like, oh, this reminds me of Kingdom of Amalur Recogning. And that's the exact game where I got, like the exact game where I got the idea of like using Chalesta because there's a fantasy soundtrack in that game that you know, relies kind of on Chalesta a bit for certain late lines for the melodies and it works very freaking well. And I like the sound of it. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to try it. And I don't, I don't remember who composed the song of the game, that game, probably Grant Kirkup or something. I, probably not. I don't even remember, but it was, it was very great. Maybe it's going to become like clear to you why once I add it here. So here I wanted to do the line that I've, I discarded before. So something like... Kind of sounds like a like a toy box or something, but it's not. And if you do like minor stuff with it, it's quite creepy, kind of. But also melancholic because of the toy box quality to it. And this could be like an echo or something, like the echo of like you know, Raska's uh, innocence or whatever. I don't know because again, she's not evil. But her nature is quite dark as well. As far as I know, I'm not really an expert. I just saw a video where, where a guy explained her story and stuff. And I'm like, wow, I need to write a track about this. Not sure if I want to do the same exact notes. Actually, no. So I'm going to need to write something that makes sense with the rest. I don't know if it makes sense. No.
Hmm, I'm getting ideas to, to add stuff from other tracks, just to, like little references and stuff. However, I'm not sure if I want to do that. Uh, uh, no, I wanted to add the narrative vocals. Actually, let me, let me do one thing. Uh, no, let me add the narrative vocals first. Not so high. So again, I'm probably gonna add this in relation to like maybe only the strings. Is it playing legatos and stuff? I don't know about that vocal. I don't really know. However, uh, what did I want to do actually? I kind of forgot. There was something I wanted to do with Solar Shadow before, but I, I don't really know. Look, there's an empty register here, which I could use pretty much. Hmm. I could introduce a new melody here.
that will probably do. I don't really know if it's decent enough. However, I know I want to do this sort of like thing. Obviously, the vocal is delayed, so I'm going to increase the uh, delay compensation. What I think we need right now is probably a hard, but I didn't really want to make this part uh, that much thick with details and stuff. Uh, so I don't really know if I want to add the harp. Like, I, I mean, I want to, but I don't know if it's good for the track right now. Like, it's not always good to go big and big and big. Like, sometimes it's not really needed, you know. And it's something I struggle with a lot, actually. The sort of megalovania I have adding stuff all the time. Also, I feel this shadow could probably have a bit less high like, low frequencies and stuff. Give it a bit more hollow feeling, kind of. And of course, we could even take this up a notch and add another melody, why not? So we got like uh, these guys, okay? Actually, let me listen to the whole thing once again because I'm losing track of all I've wrote. Shallow was definitely too early. Um, hmm. I feel that in the second half of this part, I could probably add some shallows. To make the chords a bit bigger and stuff. So I'm gonna do just that. Uh, you. Uh, you're gonna. From this bit, the cello is going to do these notes. No need to invent new stuff. I already have my basic chords laid down on my French horn. First thing I did, as I wanted that to be like the face of this moment. So I can just go and copy paste the thing, which is convenient. However, how is it going to sound? That's the question. Oh, 
what if I actually make this a tremolo? Oh, I experimented so much on this track. It's been a while I've written an original. That wasn't like a trailer or something or epic orchestral stuff. This is more like video game style, I suppose. Fantasy video game sort of thing. Now, another thing I might want to do is probably if I wanted to enforce this, I'm not sure if I want to enforce that, but if I wanted to, I could add that on Celesta on lower notes. Like here. I'm not sure that's a good idea though, because I, I already don't like how this cuts through the mix a lot. However, I wanted to add another color. I wanted to add woodwinds, other than our like contrabassoons or whatever. However, I'm not really sure what to do with those. I could do... I could probably enforce these guys. Or I could probably... Oh, there's so many ideas I'm having in mind right now. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe the violas can save show Might be asking yourself why that why I'm adding more strings. Now the fact is that the, you know our brass and stuff, the chord progressions are getting like in the second half of this part get bigger. Uh, the we also have the new melodies coming in, so everything is getting bigger. We cannot let the string ensemble stay the same, otherwise it's gonna get drowned, and we're gonna lose sight of this, which is the main thing I want to be at the center of the attention most of the time. Like it needs to be there, and thus I'm thinking about amplify its range. However, I'm not sure I'm doing it, in, doing it in the correct way. Because I'm messing with the harmonies now. Wow, this final bit sounds like Sekiro. But it cannot be allowed right now. Of 
course, another thing we need to do is to give it the same exact dynamic movement to the violin or the strings ensemble. So that's one way in which you can bring out a certain part. Now you harmonize it on a higher octave. Another thing I could have done is probably in the mix, increase the volume in this bit, etc. But, you know, why not do both? That's the best thing, in my opinion. However, I wanted to add some woodwinds. I'm... <coughs> Sorry. Uh, one hour into this thing, and I'm still just at the intro. Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> Let's... Uh, I don't know if I want to... Like, I don't know if it makes sense to actually add woodwinds. But... Like, it would only make sense... If I decided to layer the vocals, but right now I think either the vocals or the solo shadows, which are both beautiful, one of them needs to go because there is no space for them in this part, sadly so. I can totally do this and double the vocals and then they're going to be more noticeable. But I'm not sure it's the right thing to do right now. Also, why is it so fucking loud? No, the piccolo is right best. However, it's gonna sound messy in the context. But I'm going to leave it and reduce its volume a bit because I like that melody. I'm also going to leave that melody on, on uh, the choir, women, vocal, whatever. Uh, it's just that I don't really feel like maybe right now it doesn't make sense, but I might go back and like borrow it for another part of the track. Now, what we could add, of course, would be the freaking trailer booms or whatever. Uh, Yeah, of course, this is going to sound better with trailer booms. Trailer booms. Same one I use all the fucking time. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Resta. There is a command around here that allows me to, like... Like... Uh, I don't remember. It allows me to only perform the sample if I keep on pressing the note. But I don't remember what it is. Uh, come on. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, maybe it's this. No, it's not mode. It's not length either. I don't remember. 
Oh, there's one? Maybe. No. Maybe. No, I don't really remember that. Playback, useful points, ping pong loop, no. Simple start, no. This can be useful though. But whatever, uh, let's do our thing. Wait, what happened? Did, what, what, how, what? I don't know. I don't know what, what triggered it, but it's working now. What? I don't know. It works, it doesn't work, it does what it wants to. Very well. So this sounded weird to me. The reason why I noticed is that I didn't route it to my mixer, which means it wasn't being sent to the reverb and stuff like that. So now I did. So in here, call this trailer, trailer, SFX. And there's not gonna be a lot of those in this track though, I think. There's two things I missed from this intro before I'm done with it. And one of them is I actually want to do the cello melody on Celesta. I had an idea for the woodwind. Ah, please stop my brain from working. So. What if I do some trails here? Trails.
So the reason why I'm adding this, these grace notes, this like notes out of like context, is that I want this to sound more like a real woodwind player would play it, you know? And if I was a woodwind player, I, I'd play it like this. Just to make things a bit more interesting. Now, because of the woodwinds uh, added character, I suppose, I would probably boost it a bit now. It's not a background thing anymore, in my mind. Or rather it is, but it's not like... I want it to swap position to, with, the, with the vocals, so... When the vocals kick in, I'm gonna lower it, and then... here it goes back up and then here I lower it this is very fun I don't know I've never scored a character's theme now I'm really imagining things and it's very interesting This could be used later also. Another thing I could do is probably add uh, some harps, but I didn't want to hear it. Oh, Jesus, I didn't want to. Someone is making me do it. I don't really want to do that. I'm gonna leave the harps out for now because the, it's like kind of like I don't know when you add plucked instrument to a sustained section like this one, it's kind of like adding salt into a sugary whatever recipe. And what you do when you like when when you add salt to a sugar like that, I don't know, it becomes a bit more concentrated as a, as a taste. But in terms of like orchestration, when you add plucked stuff to lots of sustained sounds it becomes a bit more narrow. A bit more concentrated, of course, but also a bit more narrow. And I want, I like this, that the open space that this track has. So I'm not going to add the harps because I don't want to restrict the space. That, that, that's that's what, what I think about. So I think I should probably capitalize on, this, on the silent moments in our heart, in our brass and stuff. So, so here it's like
Now, the other thing I wanted to change in this bit is the fact that at this, like, at this particular moment, everything needs to go very loud. Or rather, it needs to like, increase the tension uh, tangibly because the next part is going to be bad. Or rather, that's, that's my idea. Uh, so what can we do? Uh, we can probably add more clusters. We don't have clusters in the tubas. Uh, we could probably, well, uh, I'm going to take care of those horn clusters later, but on the strings, we could have tremolos instead of these guys. Oh, there's already tremolos. Beautiful. Then we could probably increase the dynamics by a long shot, like we have never dared to. Before. And, There was the missing link. We did not have much rebel, rather much like rumble going on. Oh. You know about this part yet? What are the tubas doing? What? This could probably work. Okay. Oh, I know what we're, I know what we're lacking right now. I know what we're lacking. Some good timpani, which I could have used instead of the percussive booms and the trail booms and stuff. Probably, I don't
I'm not sure the symphony are going to be that much noticeable, but whatever. Maybe, maybe I need to increase their volume a bit. Uh, <laughs> I had another idea. Oh my god, it seems as if I don't want to go over this intro and get to the good part, but actually, I really want to. I just, I, my brain is just giving me lots of ideas, man. Which are basic, basic ideas. You know, like this. Wait, no. Wait, uh, so... buy a tubular bells library, like a separate one. Because I feel this one is okay, but it could sound better. Obviously, it's a full percussive library, so it has way more than tubular bells. Now, <laughs> last exact, like, I swear to God, last thing I wanted to add here before this part kicks in, maybe some, something that hints at the fact that we're getting like four <laughs> new instruments. Uh, so maybe like, I wonder how this is going to sound with OTT, OTT activated and stuff. This would definitely need a delay. Delay. So, hey, where are you? It's lower than that, probably like eight. I love how dark this sounds.
even without capitalizing like uh, I don't know big or whatever uh, bram choir rah, you know it's uh, still sounds quite dark even without all the obvious ominous uh, you know instrument choice uh, now I, the last thing actually I said this like 500 times but before I said that I wanted to enforce the transition between this part and the next one and I was sad that I wasn't gonna take care of the clusters for the brass later on. And of course I will, but I'm using, I'm gonna use this guy, uh, the palette clusters, the ones I use in my Sekiro reorchestration. So brass effects. And then I also wanted to do some strings, strings effects. I'm not sure if I'm gonna find the right one though. Uh, Uh, come on, strings, thanks. Hmm, that's a lot, a lot of gigabytes, man. Okay, now, in the final bit, let's see what string clusters I could probably add. And also, this is not the right patch. I have a, a BRSO patch for these libraries. Uh, which is where let uh, runs and arps no palette orchestra effects string effects and the brass effects Very, very, very well. Now, uh, let's see if, what, what we have here. So I need probably a long sort of cluster. Which is not playing because uh, the high pass filter must be activated somewhere. Not this, not, oh, okay, no low pass filter. Come on. No. Okay, so what's the issue? Oh, it was the high pass filter. <laughs> Maybe I should probably reload all the samples because otherwise I'm gonna have to click twice on every single one. Uh, now. No, I need to... Oh, maybe a rise. Oh my god. Oh, nice. Oh, not so nice. Jesus Christ. Very, very... This sounds amazing for horror stuff, but we're going too dark now. I like the white flurry. Dense clusters for some of the one. Which note is this? F something. No. And it was the long ones. No, it was. I don't even <laughs> remember anymore. Uh, not this one. Mm. Where was it? Maybe it was a rise. Yeah, it was a rise. So. We have 
have one. We could probably do something like uh, this, where it starts like that, and then it ends on uh, the other cluster. Yeah, I like the sound of that. However, it sounds a bit muffled. That is because, of course, the high pass filter must have kicked in. So I'm just going to disable it. Oh no. Okay. Okay, so it was the low pass filter. So as you saw, this library has different, like the, the way in which it's linked to the MIDI control commands and stuff is a bit different. And you can retweak that to your leisure, but I'm going to leave it as it is and just use the expression. Still, it sounds a bit muffled. Maybe it's just a sample, so I'm just gonna do this. Actually, I want it in the second instrument. No, yeah. We're gonna send this to strings channel actually. Well, it's not exactly the perfect sound for this specific part. I think it's close. So yeah, uh, th that will be okay. And then I need to add one for the brass. Let's see what we can use for the brass. Let's still use a prize. What happened to the brass? Oh yeah, of course. So this, we know exactly what sample we're using. So we update sample pool, we're going to use 83 megabytes instead of like 500,000 and three little samples. And here, you're not hearing anything because of the same reason. Move the high pass. And... Okay, so, okay. Wow. Those are really fine clusters. I'm just wondering if they're good for this track. Hmm. 
Maybe I'm just going to use this one for the brush. <clears throat> Whatever, let's skip this one. No. No. I can't find the right one. I'm just gonna keep that one and that's it. Okay, so we got the intro handled. That's that's our Vraska intro. Nice. Uh let's let's listen to it with OTT on because of like fun and profit. And then yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap this for for now. And then I'm I'm gonna continue it. And maybe make another video of me continuing this thing. But let me let me listen to it now, uh with OTT on. Uh let's go. Yes, this is exactly what I wanted. I only took too much time to write it. Two hours is not is not a great for this. However, however, we have an intro, and now in the next episode we're gonna continue on doing the, the good part. Hoping I uh, keep on being on you know a streak, whatever. But yeah. By the way, if you learned something, feel free to subscribe, send this video to a friend who might earn some value out of it. And uh, yeah, you can check out the new episodes on the Patreon page. Cheers.